In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the Ava Visualizer within the Sphere 2 software. To open the software, simply double click on the desktop icon. If the visualizer is connected via USB to your computer, it will actually automatically start displaying a live image. I'll just maximize the software from there. The visualizer allows you to look at whatever you might want to display underneath it. So whether we might be looking at a physical textbook, we can have that displayed. Whether you want to show students how to use a calculator, you would be able to do that as well. Alternatively, by using normal white paper, you would be able to actually write as you would on a normal whiteboard. The next part of the video, I will demonstrate how you can actually use the software and what the functionality of the software are. I'll open up a part on a textbook and we'll get started. The very first at the bottom left hand corner of my screen is my camera controls. The very first function would be my pause mode. By pausing the image, this will pause the live feed underneath the camera. You would be able to go to the next part of your lesson within the textbook or if you have a physical object and you would be able to click unpause and it will basically be a live image once again you would be able to zoom in onto this information you would be zoom, able to zoom out once zoomed in you also have a re zoom reset that will basically just zoom it out all the way you have a rotate option as well, so you would be able to actually rotate the visualizer image as well. At the very end, you have image adjustments. With the image adjustments, you would be able to actually go and change your brightness, your contrast, your white balance, all those functionality. But just through taking in mind that the software will automatically adjust most functions for you. I'm going to go back. Let's zoom in a bit. From here, my next option would be my annotation tools. Within the annotation tools, you have different pen tools. The pen tools work great if you have, are using a touchscreen laptop or, for example, an interactive whiteboard. Alternatively, you would be able to use most of the functionality by just using your computer mouse. You would be able to go and underline certain information. You might want to go and add in some text as well and to say that that's important. You can still select this text and move it around. You would be able to add in some shapes. So the grey shapes would be a shape with a solid fill. The white shapes would be a shape with just an outline. I'll just use the undo function to get rid of those. So if I wanted to, I can further put this information into a red block. As I discussed, I can do undo and redo. Alternatively, you can use the erasing tools as well. The whiteboard eraser that will erase individual objects. The little broom will delete all the information underneath the screen. The recording options, you would be able to actually record your entire lesson. Before starting to record, you'll have to go to the top left hand corner, go to sphere 2. Select your options and go to the videos tab. On this videos tab, so you can select a prefix for your file name. So this might be maths week one, for example. Select a suffix, which would be your date. Select a recording format, MP4 AVI. MP4 would be the latest, so I would suggest using MP4. You would be able to go and select your file location. So this is by default where your files will be saved to. You can select your video quality between high, medium and low according to your requirements. And further, you would be able to select the microphone of which you want to use. Once you've changed your settings, you can say OK. Go to recording and start recording your lesson. This will record whatever you are doing underneath the actual visualizer. It will further record any annotations that you might add to this lesson at the same time as well. Should you want to have an all video discussion, you can simply pause the video recording. 
you will notice that the record button stopped flashing and that my recording duration is also no longer moving. If you want to re continue your recording, simply click on the pause button and continue re your recording from there. Once you are done with the recording, you can simply click on the record button which will automatically stop this video. So where does this save to? So this will save by default to your documents folder. Underneath documents you'll have a folder called AVA. Underneath AVA you will have media library. And in this media library you will have pictures and you'll have videos. All your pictures will save to your pictures folders and all your videos will save automatically to the video folder. So from here we can actually go and have a look at all the recordings that we have done. I can simply right click, open with, choose your default media player, mine would be VLC, and this will automatically play back the video we just recorded. This will record whatever you are doing underneath the actual visual album. It will put in front any annotations that you might add to this lesson at the same time. So you will notice the annotations if coming you in shortly. If you want to add a discussion, you can send the pause button and continue to read the from there. Once you are Okay, I will go back to the software. The next option would be my screen capture options. With the screen capture, you would be able to capture your screen in different options. For this, I'm going to use my calculator as an example. Let's just zoom out all the way. I'm going to clear my annotations and I'm just going to leave. Let's actually change that and I'll say that this is a calculator. So, right, as an example. So, by going to my screen capture options, my very first option is a full screen capture in normal quality or in high definition. What I would be able to do is take a snapshot, which will automatically save this image to my computer underneath my AVA folder in pictures. But I would also be able to go to my Word document. So when saving an image from the Visualizer software, it does two things. It saves it to your computer and it pins it to your Windows clipboard so you can immediately go and paste it. I'm just going to do this as an example and I'm going to say today's lesson. I would be able to immediately right click, paste and that image is immediately within the software for me and can be resized. Going back to my software, my next part of the screen would be an area capture. With the area capture, so let's say for example I had an equation here, I would be able to use that. So similar to the window snipping tool, you can actually go and select the area that you want to capture, leave that, that will get saved to your computer once again, as well saved to your clipboard, so I would be able to go and paste that immediately within my Word document as well. The last option underneath my capture would be my continuous capture. So this would be great for the sciences, for example, where you would be able to actually go and select a time interval of how long you want to take snapshots of. So you can set it for up to 72 hours in intervals of every 30 minutes for the next 72 hours. The visualizer will take an image of whatever is underneath it. You have your presentation source, which would be your next option. Here you would be able to actually go and set the focus on a specific part of the screen. Anywhere on the gray area, you would be able to actually move this around. Click on the blue line to automatically be able to resize it. You would be able to go to the settings as well of the unit, change the shape or change its transparency at the same time. Once you're done, just click on the red cross to close it off. My next part would be my screen shade or my screen visor. So this would be great if you had like math equations, for example. So what I'll do, just as an example, I'll create, take that away. And then I'm just going to say 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and then 6 plus 4 equals 10. 
So as an example, I would be able to open up my visor, hide the answers from the students. As we go on, we can actually then start revealing and discussing those answers. Once you are done, you can just close that off. At the same time, my next option would be my widget mode. So with the widget mode at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, I can click on that and that will minimize my Sphere 2 software and open up your camera in the corner of the screen. This would be completely resizable as well. I'm just going to minimize that and let's go back to our Word presentation. So the widget mode will actually allow you to have your camera feed on top of your PowerPoint or your Word presentation as an example. You would still be able to do screen captures, so which will capture your full screen. Let's paste this in here just to show you how that would actually work. So this time it would be a capture of my Word presentation with my camera feed. You can also go as far as saying I just want to capture just an image of the visualizer image at the same time. Once again I can go back, right click paste and that image will be pasted within my Word presentation. Within the widget mode, you further have annotation tools as well. So you can click on the annotation option to open up your toolbar. From here, you would be able to, for example, once again, select a line, annotate anywhere over the screen, or basically use some line tools and erase that from there. You also have basic shapes, once again, of which you can use. I'll just close that off. To close the widget mode, you simply just close it off. I'll minimize that and you can go back to your Sphere 2 software and continue your lesson. On the top right hand side, some of the features would be your picture in picture mode. With the picture in picture mode, this will allow you to open up your webcam within your lesson as well. So I'll click on the picture in picture mode, click on webcam, and that will bring in a live image from your webcam within to the lesson as well. Once again, you can still be able to record this. You'll notice that there's little errors on the webcam image. You would be able to write or click on, on any of those, and that will actually move it to a different corner of the screen. You'll have a little plus sign, which will be able to enlarge the actual image, or click in the minus to close it off. You would be able to also just close it off by clicking on the X. On the top left hand side, by default your software would be in visualizer mode. You also have a side by side mode. With the side by side mode, this will bring in two cameras at a time. So I still have my live camera feed on here and it will by default open up my webcam. Should you not want your webcam within this image, you can simply go to the corner of the screen and close that off. If you look, have a look at the very left top hand side of my screen, you have those little dots. Those are my media library. Within this media library, you have all the images that you have captured before. So I would be able to select any of these and drag, simply drag them over to my side by side mode. I would be able to select multiple of these videos. And let's just select another one. Up to a maximum of six videos at a time. I can minimize my media library once again. You would be able then to actually double click on any one of these to enlarge them, double click to make it smaller, and so we can go on and work through our lessons comparing these things. You would be able to still go and close them off as well, have a look at four screens, we only have a look at my camera with two screens as an example. You also have a whiteboard mode, so if you are using an interactive whiteboard for example and you don't want to jump between the different software packages, you simply can select a pen from here and start writing. You can still save this information by taking a snapshot or by doing an actual video recording.